Batteries are needed to power everything from drones to heavy machinery and are crucial in our efforts to move away from burning fossil fuels for energy. It's a race that China leads and America lags by at least a decade. Iris Pizza filed this report for CNA. In Silicon Valley, companies like the lithium-ion battery maker Amprius are hard at work trying to design and build better batteries. It's an Every component that moves, the world needs better batteries, uh, and we are at the forefront of that. Here in Fremont, California, Amprius designs their lithium-ion batteries with silicon anodes used for applications like drones, where lighter batteries can double flight times. Here, they operate a pilot line to build and refine new products. This is the entrance to Amprius's cell assembly area where special gear is required to avoid contamination. This is where processes like stacking and electrolyte fill take place. Those electrolytes are what allow ions to pass between the battery terminals, enabling conductivity. But as with many American battery makers, high volume manufacturing happens abroad in places like South Korea and China. China remains the dominant force in the battery supply chain, the result of a decades-long push by the government. China is, is, I would say, around 10 years ahead of Europe and North America in terms of developing those, those battery supply chains and EV production. China's advantage extends from mineral refining to battery cell assembly. That's raised major strategic concerns in Washington, especially in the wake of Beijing's moves to restrict rare earth exports. They really dominate the supply chain end to end. So you can think about upstream materials, raw materials or processed materials like graphite, for instance, that go into batteries. That's dominated by China. You can also think about downstream manufacturing, cells, packs, the electric vehicles themselves that the batteries are going into. China is the dominant player on those as well. Even as the Trump administration has dialed back support for clean energy initiatives in the U.S., electric vehicles continue to drive up demand. The need for more renewable energy storage is also heating up. Energy storage is becoming more and more important. And it makes sense because grid storage uh, is going to depend on uh, battery, battery storage, and uh, not only at the grid level, but also at the home level. Advancements in battery technology mean they're continually getting cheaper to produce. Costs have come down on an amazing basis. Uh, it's something like $100 a kilowatt hour today, sometimes 50, sometimes 150, depending on the actual chemistry. But that number was 10, maybe even 100 times higher. But analysts say keeping pace with China will require major investment as well as demand for American-made batteries. China is the most dominant player, but the U.S. still has a couple hundred gigawatt hours of battery capacity. And it's doubled its manufacturing capacity for batteries from 2022 to 2024. Batteries are a key part of negotiations at COP30 in Brazil as a critical element to modernizing power grids, enabling the shift to renewables and highlighting the need for capital investment. I like to think of them as the point guard or the utility player of the transition. Their job is to make everyone else look good or, or perform better. COP30 is likely to show how central storage has become to climate ambition and how much of a leap is still needed for the U.S. to win this storage war. For CNA, I'm Ira Spitzer in Fremont, California.